Well, welcome back DIY car guys and car girls. So today we're going to do some plug readings. And the reason why I do these plug readings, actually I hope to have the S10 back here moving. It did move, took around the block, but then I realized, you see the radiator right there? Here. It must have sprung a leak when the dry shaft came slinging out. Here's that clip again. So in case you're new to my channel, you want to see what happened. Here it is. So that's what happened. We're getting it all put back together. But when I did that pass, we did have the opportunity to do a plug reading. I put brand new plugs in, drove, actually drove to the test spot, put brand new plugs in, made the nitrous hit. And then of course, I didn't get to make a full rip, but I did get to make a pretty good pull. At least we can get some information off these plugs. And of course, when I realized I didn't have any gears, I shut it down, pulled over, and it wasn't ran until today but i pulled the plugs out before i ran it so these plugs should be a decent reading to get an idea of my changes i made on this guy to even out the mixture on nitrous so that's what we're doing today Okay, before we start cutting these plugs open right here and looking at them and talking about what I see in all the cylinders, it's important that you know this was after a change. So we need to know what changes I did to make it here so that way it might facilitate you guys into making the correct decision. I'm not saying I have the best decisions about um, you know, tuning a vehicle or doing nitrous. It's just what I'm seeing and hopefully it'll kind of give you guys and point you in the right direction so if you wanna get into tuning your own car with nitrous, you know, I do have a little experience. I've burnt things up, I've hurt things, but it's important that you know the changes that I made, why we're leading to this point right here. So before we get to those, let's see what I did before and how the plugs look. So here are the plugs from this hit right here. You must put in new plugs right before the hit. After the hit, shut it down and pull them. Do not drive on them. Then examine. All right, so what I'm seeing, these are definitely the fattest. These are the leanest. So what I'm gonna do is this. Since obviously these guys are the leanest, these are the fattest, back is fine. I'm gonna just up the fueling here. And I'm also gonna go up on the nitrous and just go up just a touch on the fueling on the plate. So the idea is to lean these out a little more because they're obviously fat, but put a little more fuel on this side. I float everything. We're gonna take one more degree out just so it's safe. Get all this jotted down, make a hit and see what happens. Okay, so when I pull the plugs, I like to separate it into the banks. This is gonna be the even, this is gonna be the odd. So you look at your motor, you know this side's doing something, this side's doing something, and we know how to adjust everything accordingly. At least that's how I do it. You might have a different way. So let's first start with number two. And before I cut these open, I like to look at them and look for heat and timing marks before I open up to look at fueling. So let's look at number two, of course. Very easy to see what a time mark is. It's like right there. And let's look at the heat. We're just going down to the first thread right here, so that's okay. Looks like the cadmium, see as it's shinier, means the cadmium's not getting burnt off, so there is less heat. When the cadmium gets burnt off, see how the shiny this side is? And see how it's looking a little more gray right here? That means you got heat in the motor. So, this doesn't look too bad. Timing looks good. We don't see any signs of it getting overstressed or heated. So let's move on to the next one, which is four. Four, it's a little harder to see where the timing mark is, but we can kind of see it's like right there. See that little difference in color right there? So that's where the time mark is. If it starts to move this way, 
this way a time mark, it means you can give it timing. If it comes too far over this way towards the base of that strap, you have too much timing. I like to make, keep it safe. A lot of people will look at this and say, man, I'm going to give that thing more timing. I like them to be right there. That's just me because I've hurt things in the past, giving it too much timing, thinking I could because I wasn't looking at all the plugs. You need to look at them all, especially with the carburetor. Fuel injection, you still have to look at them, but you can make individual fueling changes. Uh, that's a little easier and more accurately with EFI. The carburetor, you kind of have to make a global change, and then you can make small changes like I did before, trying to direct more fuel to that side of the motor. So that's... What we're doing today we're going to see if those work but we have to cut the plugs to look at the fuel ring to see if that actually worked so right now we are just looking at timing and heat all right so let's move on to the next one yep you can see it it's right around here see that see that difference in color right there so this one is and look at that see the cadmium right here you can see it's not quite as burnt off as some other ones look at this one too look at the cadmium of this one let's, let's go back to this guy See that right there? All that right there? We didn't even burn the cadmium. It started to burn, but we didn't burn it off. So the heat on those two are fine. It's hard to hurt something when you have no heat in it, but you don't want to have it too cold because you're going to lose horsepower. So let's look at this one again. You can definitely see a time mark right there. Looking at the heat. It's down to these threads right here. I think this part right here is just some crap in there. There's no way to heat it that far down because you can see right here. See the change to here? I think it just made it to like the first thread right there. All right, so moving on to the back one, which is eight. We got eight. Okay, so we're going to pause right here. This one and examine this a little more. I noticed this off camera when I was editing it. See those little tiny bit of like uh, black spots on there? I know some people are like, man, that's a... Uh, that's detonation or that's pre-ignition. Honestly, I think that is just carbon spitting off because many times it's done that. I can I cannot pull enough timing out for it not to do it. It'll be a complete dog. It'll you'll see that a little bit. Um, and I, I've looked in the cylinder. I've done compression tests, so I can't find any evidence of it being detonation. Now, like I said, I just think it's carbon flying off. Now, if it is detonation, I can tell you what that looks like. If this timing mark, you can't see it, and it's, this color right here is all the way down there, and if you see like little silver balls on there, that is definitely a detonation. That's when aluminum is coming off your plug, sorry, coming off your piston and slinging onto your plug. So this right here, I just kind of gave up on trying it not to do that, this slightly, slightly, but I didn't, really don't think that it's a detonation or pre-ignition. You can definitely see a time mark right there. We got more cadmium burnt off on the top. The heat looks like it got to right there. And there's a timing mark, so it's a little pushed back farther. Definitely have more heat in it. I cannot make individual timing changes. I can only do a global change with mine. So now let's move on to the odd side. So let's look at this. Now, this one's going to be a little more difficult to see the timing mark, but you can see right here. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to look off camera and in there at the same time. Uh, yeah, look at the timing's way up here. Can you see that? Way up there. See, some people would just pull that one and say, I'm going to give it more timing. Well, what about the others? They all need a look. So when you're first doing your nitrous tune-ups, seeing how everything is, it's important that you pull all your plugs. So let's look at this. Looks like uh, all the cadmium is burnt off in this guy. And we're down to this thread right here. So we got a little more heat in that guy. But on this side, you can see we're not too much in the heat. When it starts to radiate down like all sides like that, you gotta keep an eye on it. So we're gonna keep an eye on this one I don't see any signs of like the edges of this guy. You know, I say the edges, the edges of the of the strap right here. This guy right here. You want to look at the edges, make sure they're not looking like they're starting to melt. 
or anything looks really distressed you can definitely tell that this one definitely has more heat in it so we need to keep an eye on number one so let's move on to three let's see what time mark is look at the time mark is way up here see that way up there time marks up there look we got cadmium that's not burnt off here look at the top look you didn't even get much heat in it right there it's not even down to the first thread let's move around the entire thing start heat started to come in or right around here i have a feeling this one's going to be stupid fat when we um cut the threads off let's go to five moving our way down it's hard to see timing this one but it looks like it's still way up there too so way up there doesn't look like it's coming down too much you can see that little white mark try to keep an eye on that because you can see a lot a lot of times the little white mark right here now i'm running a leaded race gas so it's going to look a little more gray than if you're ruling a pump gas ethanol it's pretty hard you're just looking at heat for fueling an ethanol because it really takes a lot of heat out the motor when you're using that cold fuel so I think this one looks pretty good too. Let's look around the threads and see how far it's coming down. You can see right there where it's coming down into the threads. Right there. So that one's not too bad. The one that looks like it had the most heat is definitely number one right here. And then we can see that evident right there. See that? There's the difference. So let's look at this guy right here. This one looks like it's a little difficult to see the timing mark. I do think that it is. See right there? Can you see that? It's about right there. See a difference in the color change? Sometimes it's not as easy to see. You just got to look at it and hope you can see it <laughs> sometimes. Heat's coming down right there. So this one doesn't have as much heat. All the cadmium is burnt off. So I don't see anything that's really scaring me on this tune-up. Like I said before, it's important you look at bank to bank because you can make changes in your carburetor. When you have a plate, you can only make a jet change as a global change. The carburetor, you can do a little more feeling here, a little more feeling there, and all the barrels. So you have to try all of that. So let's cut these threads off and look at the fueling. Okay, so how I cut the plugs off is pretty simple. I got a drill, you put a plug in there. So it spins. Take this, turn it on. Let's do it. There you go. It is now cut and we can see the fuel ring. So I'm gonna do that to all eight. Okay, so I went ahead and moved everything up here so it's easier to see. The sun was creeping in and didn't give me a good reading of what it's looking like. So if you see this color right here, this color difference, see that bottom section that's darker? That is your fuel ring. That's how you know how fat it is. If you look up here, how it's lighter, then it goes to the darker color. Like I said, that is your fuel ring. Now, the lighter that ring is, the less fuel you have. This actually probably is still a little fat, but thing you need to consider on that hit, I did a lot of pedaling, and also I wasn't in it really that long, and I can't remember how long I had idle time, so all that's gonna throw it off. But what I tried to do, it does look like it is working, that these guys right here are definitely a little fatter than last time I hit it. I need to go and verify this at the track, whenever i have a good clean pass and i can shut it down and pull them again that's someone we'll know when else is working so i don't want to make too many more changes but what i'm seeing here you can see that everything looks like it does have more closer of a fuel ring than before which is good because the carburetor is definitely a little tricky to get everything to have that same fuel ring like i said before fuel injection you can have more control over individual cylinders doing your fueling but a carburetor is more of a global change and you have to monkey around with it okay so as you're making changes it's important that you write it down that last hit i wrote down everything that i had i even wrote the temperature down i didn't write it down on the hit that we're looking at 
right here because the drive shaft broke and I had bigger things to worry about. But at least we know that the changes from here to here did make a difference. So if you look at this right here, 71 um, nitrous, 55 fuel. I haven't put the timing. I haven't put what I floated at. So when you're flowing that, you're putting the jet in there and you're just running fuel through it and looking at your pressure and you want to have the most consistent pressure that your system will put out on the nitrous right there. And since I was changing, trying to get, you know, uh, these guys a little fatter, this is what I did. I went up on the nitrous, only went one touch up on the fuel. I took a degree out, made sure it was flowing the same pressure, but on the front jet, on this bank, which is this side, I went up on that jet to 83, but I left the driver's side to 79. And the whole point with that was is try to direct more fuel to that section of the motor. So as you do these changes, make sure that you write everything down. Uh, I think it was still pretty damn hot that day, so I'm just gonna write 90 down. And another good thing is too, if you tune to where it's safe, as the temperature changes, like if it goes cool, if it's a little fat, obviously, and you don't have, you know, that much timing in it, it's going to be a little safer to change with incremental weather changes. So it's very important that you don't put it right on the edge unless you really want to win something, you know, but that I don't really worry about that. I'm just trying to have fun and I'm trying to make it go faster and keep it safe. Doesn't mean that something won't go wrong, but the whole idea with this is to do your best to make sure everything looks good so when you go to the track, you're not gonna hurt anything. And who wants to hurt a motor, burn stuff up? I don't want to, I've done it in the past and it sucks. So hopefully this has been helpful. Don't forget to subscribe guys and peace.